Greetings, this is Augusta Caesar, a social studies curriculum content trainer, here to provide you with some PD around blended learning for K-5 social studies classrooms. As you may know, this school year's theme is nothing is impossible. In the words of Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done. And that may be how you're feeling about implementing blended learning in your social studies classrooms. However, it is our hope upon leaving this training that you feel adequately prepared to implement this instructional strategy in your classroom. Before you is our session agenda. We'll first discuss why blended learning. You know, what's the big idea? Then we'll take a look at the station rotation model. We'll discuss in depth blended learning in social studies classroom, specifically flipped classrooms, web quests, and quad D learning. Finally, you'll have the chance to participate in a station rotation planning session. Finally, you'll have the opportunity to post questions and voice concerns using our feedback survey. So the question is, why blended learning? You know, what's the big idea? Many schools across the country have begun to implement blended learning. Although this is not a new instructional strategy, it is gaining popularity for its ability to integrate technology with online instructional resources. Beyond this fact, it's also noted to improve communication, allow teachers to deliver more personalized instruction, is student-driven, and improves self-management skills. Before you is a station rotation model. In station rotation, students rotate through different modalities um, in a singular classroom or across a set of classrooms. I like to call this the big three. Students rotate typically through an online-based coursework station, a direct instruction station, and a small group workstation. However, teachers may choose to implement an independent workstation, but we suggest beginning with the big three. So, for teachers of kindergarten through fifth grade, you guys have a very small instructional block ranging from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So you may be wondering, how am I supposed to do station rotations when I only have 30 minutes or 45 minutes to deliver social studies instruction? Luckily for you, we have developed station rotation models that align to a 30 minute instructional block and a 45 minute instructional block. Each model is inclusive of rotation ideas for teachers in K through five. These resources can be found on our site before you. So let's go ahead and take a look at a 30 minute rotation model. This model gives you an overview of what this 30 minutes can actually look like. So to begin, you wanna get the students engaged and warmed up for what they will encounter in their station rotations. So you may begin analyzing source documents. This may be an illustration, a piece of text, or maybe even a sound recording. Through this process, students can express their notices and wonders about the sources. From there is where we go into our station rotations. Again, we have our big three, our teacher station, our collaborative station, and our online station. To the right, you'll see rotation ideas for each of these stations. In your teacher station, that's where you're going to provide students with a mini lesson. You'll have the opportunity to provide direct instruction, facilitate discussions, and possibly incorporate an oral assessment. That should take approximately seven minutes. From there, we go into our collaborative station. Here, students will participate in collaborative consent. Um, conversations, hands-on activities, project-based learning, and debates, or four-corner thrash outs. In our online station, students complete individual assignments, participate in online ins instruction, participate in guided research, they may develop digital presentations, or complete interactive activities. Your online station can also be your independent workstation. Here, students may participate in Nearpod lessons, complete studies weekly publications, or complete skill builder, skill builder activities in Discovery Day. 
Finally, from there, we move into our closing. And this is where students have the chance to develop and express their claims with support of prior knowledge and evidence from the activities they participated in in their small groups or in their station rotations. Before you is a 30 minute rotation model. Don't forget for three five teachers, we do have a 45 minute model. This can be found on our social studies website. The link is before you. So we'll take a deeper look at what station rotations can look like in a K-5 classroom. So we have the flipped classroom model, which you may be familiar with. And the flipped classroom model is centered on the idea that lecturing is not the best way to provide instruction. Instead, students get to encounter information before they receive direct instruction. Some resources that I've used personally include BrainPop Jr., Nearpod, and Discovery Ed. What I like most about Discovery Ed is that they have skill builder activities that will prepare students for what they will encounter at the teacher table or in the direct instruction station. So let's take a look at a resource provided by Discovery Ed. This skill builder activity is for students in grades K through two, but there is a similar one for students in grades three to five. So this skill builder activity provides students with some guiding questions. There are videos linked and activities incorporated throughout. Most activities included are interdisciplinary, so you may see some things around grammar. You may see some activities around math and science. This may be an activity that students complete prior to coming to the teacher station. So what I want to point out is this talk about it section. And it says, how might history have changed if Christopher Columbus never took his journey? So before they come to the direct instruction station, you may have them discuss this with their groups, or maybe they respond in writing. So when they come to your teacher station, you will have already had some knowledge around Christopher Columbus before receiving direct instruction from you. Again, this is a skill builder activity located in Discovery Ed, but is it an easy resource to incorporate in an online or independent workstation? Moving on from the classroom model, we'll take a look at WebQuest. WebQuest is a free online platform that sends students on quests to build their understanding and content knowledge. So, a web quest is an inquiry-based activity. It's a way to get students to actively use the internet in a safe and secure manner. It's interactive and fun. So I pulled a web quest around the first Thanksgiving and we'll walk through this web quest and look at some of the features that are included. So we begin with an introduction. This just gives an overview of the web quest. It tells students what they will be doing it says this web quest will allow children to explore the first Thanksgiving, learn about the different views of pilgrims and Native Americans, and how Thanksgiving has evolved into the holiday that it is today. So that's just a brief overview of the web quest. From there, there's an actual task. So within groups of four, students will discover what it was like to be at the first Thanksgiving in 1621. That's their task. From the task, we move into the process. So what steps students will take to actually complete the web quest? There are active links that students must move through in order to complete the quest. The great thing about web quests is that you can collect them for a grade. And the feature that I most appreciate is the evaluation feature, which provides you with a rubric. Again, the rubric can be adjusted. You would just need to pull it from WebQuest and paste it into your own document and adjust it as you see fit. From evaluating, we go into our conclusion and that's where we wrap up our learning. From there, we give credit. This is where you may incorporate sourcing and citing documents. And that is the end of this web quest around the first Thanksgiving. 
Again, this is a free resource that can easily be incorporated into a station, whether that is an online station where students work independently or a small group station where students work collaboratively. Finally, we'll take a look at quad learning. Quad learning is essential to center, to center rotations and that it allows teachers to differentiate stations based on the abilities of their students. So Quad D is our ultimate goal, but for students who are not there yet, they may transition beginning with A, moving on to B, C, and finally D. So through Quad D learning, students are asked to compose, create, design, invent, research, defend, compare, and justify. And all of these verbs align to the DOK levels. So you may have students who are working at a level one and those who are working at a level three. But fortunately, Quad D makes it easy for you to pull those different activities at different levels. So that, that way you can differentiate activities for your students. The example before you is an elementary example and is located on our site as well. So I've crafted a station rotations display, so that way you can see what should this look like in my classroom. We always suggest that you begin by establishing your group work expectations. I've often used the group's anchor chart that you see to our left. Students should get along, be kind without arguing, respect others, listen to everyone's ideas, remain on task, stay on track and do their job, use quiet voices, participate, and stay with their groups. To cut down on confusion, I always use the motto, ask three before me, because there's guaranteed to be someone within their group who can answer any questions that students may have. Next, we'll discuss groups. And with your groups, it just depends on how you want to group students, whether that's based on ability level, um, if it's based on interest or learning style, that's definitely up to the discretion of the teacher, but you do want to have those groups posted in your classroom so that students know what group they belong to and which station they should rotate to daily. Finally, you'll actually want to have the station rotations displayed on the board so the students know what activities they will complete in each station. Every station should have an accountability portion where students have something that they must complete and submit. So we always remind students when you finish an activity, either drag a check mark or make sure you place their assignment into a folder. Again, this isn't what you have to do, but it is suggested that you, of course, set expectations, inform students of what groups they belong to, and let them know what activities they will rotate through. So now you will have the chance to actually participate in the station rotation planning. These are the guiding questions that you must ask yourself in order to take that linear agenda or lesson plan and incorporate blended learning. So first, you want to transform your linear agenda into a station rotation. So you're going to pull out direct instruction, and that's going to be your teacher station. Next, you'll have your small group station. That's where students get to participate in guided practice. Finally, you have your online station where students are working independently. Second question, how will you group your students? Is it based on skill level, interests, learning preference, or are you using a random method? Thirdly, how do you currently differentiate for various skill levels in a class? So this is where you may want to implement quad D learning, taking those GOK levels and determining which students will go where, and how you will provide differentiated activities for them to practice skills and assess their own knowledge. Four, how can you use technology and online resources to differentiate work within stations? So for instance, incorporating WebQuest, Achieve 3000, which provides lessons based on Lexile levels, DBQ, or Studies Weekly. Again, these are just suggestions there are a ton of resources located in Clever that can be easily implemented into an online station. So what you will do now is take the next 
10 or so minutes to plan your first station rotation. You will want to pause this video, gather any resources or data that you need to craft your groups and begin planning stations. We have now neared the end of our professional development. Before you is the instructional team's contact information. Dr. Tiffany McCoy Thomas is the district instructional supervisor for social studies. She can be reached at tthomas8 at BBR schools. I'm Augusta Caesar, a curriculum content trainer. You can send me an email at acaesar at BBR schools. Finally, Ms. Jennifer Foster, also a curriculum content trainer, can be reached at jfoster5 at EBR schools. You can always vis visit us on our social studies website where we host virtual office hours Tuesday through Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. Any additional questions or comments that you may have can be asked using our feedback survey. You can opt to scan the QR code or access the link before you to pose any questions or voice any concerns that you may have regarding blended learning or anything related to social studies instruction. Thank you.